Martin. I'm uh, proud to serve the YMCA as the Health and Wellness Director at the Edward Jones Family YMCA. I'm here today with my friends Stacy and Matt, and we're going to lead you through a short yoga practice. We're going to start today with a little bit of centering. So if you're not already seated, um, come down to the floor, find yourself in a seated posture, whether that's on your knees or with the easy leg posture, cross legs. And just close your eyes and just settle into your breath. And as you feel your breath, just notice the outside world starting to wash away. Quiet your mind. today, you always have the opportunity to come back to the sound of your breath. You'll use your breath to quiet yourself, quiet your mind, and bring your focus back to your mat. If you haven't already done so, I'd like for you to take charge of your breath at this time. So actively begin breathing. Don't just do it passively. left hand on your low belly, your right hand at heart center, and just start feeling your breath, breathing in through your nose, breathing deep with your belly, feeling that left hand rise and fall with each exhale. Each breath you're going to try and draw just a little deeper. breath, now is a good time to activate that breath. Letting your hands fall down to the side of the mat, we're going to transition to standing and start with some standing lateral bends. So inhaling your arms up overhead. Exhaling your arms back down to your side. Two more. This time you're going to keep your arms overhead. You're going to take your right wrist into your left hand. And you're going to bend off to the left. Taking just a couple of breaths. Feeling that right side rib cage. And on the next inhale, you're going to come back to upright. You're going to change the grip of your hands. You're going to exhale off to the right. Same thing here, inhaling deeply. back. Letting go of that grip hand. This time you're going to take steeple mudra. So crossing your pinky, ring finger, and middle finger, index finger, and thumb pointing straight back and up. This time you're going to bend off again to the left side with steeple mudra hands. Just activating your core, just a little different with a slight variation in the hands. On the next inhale, you're going to rise back up. And on the exhale, going back to the right. And on the next inhale, coming back forward up, up to the top again. This time, you're going to let go of any grip. Your hands are just going to be reaching towards the ceiling. 
And on the exhale, you're going to reach off, again, bending laterally to the left. Pretending that you've got a ball, um, a box of Kleenex, just acting as though you've got something in that grasped hands, but not letting your hands touch. And on the inhale, rising back up, exhaling back to the right. Just a couple of breaths. And on the inhale, coming up, and exhaling those hands back down to your sides. Shaking your arms out, just gathering your breath. To start by taking our hands, placing them on our shoulders, and just do some shoulder circles, kind of warming things up through those important shoulder joints. Doing little circles, doing big circles, just finding something that feels good in your body. Whenever we're doing any kind of rotation, you always want to make sure that you go back the opposite direction as well. It's important that you stay balanced throughout the practice. Letting go of those shoulders, shaking the arms out. And we're just going to do some nice big circles. Right arm, left arm, going back the opposite direction. Good. Shaking things out, just coming back to your breath, standing up strong in mountain pose. Activating everything, stacking all of your bones, opening your chest, dropping your chin. On the next inhale, we're going to inhale ourselves up into chair pose. You're going to bring your feet closer together, toes almost touching. Inhaling up, bending your knees, pushing your hips towards the rear of the room. Seeing if you can't keep your knees behind your toes. Doing what you can to bring your torso upright. Good, and on the exhale, standing back up. We're going to do that one more time. Inhaling back into chair pose. Bringing those knees back, toes close together. Some comfortable posture in your frame. Exhaling, standing back up. Kind of open our feet up just a little ways here. We're moving towards what's called goddess pose. Um, so feet are going to be approximately at a 45 degree angle, pointing out and away, opening um, a little bit further than shoulder distance. You're going to squat down, knees going the same direction as your toes, arms coming up, shoulder blades squeezing back. goddess pose. From this goddess pose, we're going to drop our hands to our knees and just do a couple of twists here, opening up the chest and shoulders just a little bit, both sides. Come back, first side. Inhaling arms back up. From here, we're going to add just a little more heat to those legs. We're going to stand up, arms staying up, and squatting back down. We're going to do three more of those. Arms can go up higher if you want. Coming back down, the shoulders are staying active. Your shoulder blades are reaching back behind you. Last one of those squats. Just building a little heat. And exhaling your hands back down. You're going to heel toe into the middle. Again, coming back, just catching our breath here in Mountain Pose. We're going to transition to Warrior Two. So um, with my orientation here to the camera, I'm going to use my right foot. I'm going to be stepping forward. Remember, Warrior Two is a open hip pose. This front knee should be directly over that front ankle. Back leg straight rooting down through that pinky toe side of that left foot. Right knee opening towards the pinky toe side. Shoulders dropping down and away from your ears. Reaching long with your hands. Just a few 
few breaths here. We're going to straighten that right leg, transitioning to warrior two on the second side. Just a simple transition of the feet. Remember this back leg, now my right leg becomes my back leg. It's going to be parallel-ish to the back edge of my mat. Front foot is now my left foot that's pointing the same direction as my knee, bending deep into that knee. Remember, warrior two is what we call a tightrope pose. So my front heel should be intersecting the heel or instep of my back foot. So I'm kind of standing on a tightrope. Straighten that leg. We're going to transition again. Toes coming straight out in front. We're going to stay here with this expanded leg stretch. So again, your legs, feet are going much wider than shoulder distance apart. We're going to transition straight into expanded leg stretch A. So with expanded leg stretch A, all we're doing, folding forward at the hips, hands coming down towards the mat, finding the variation of this pose that feels good in your body. Big deep stretch hamstrings down the outer sides of both legs. Trying to maintain that neutral spine with your head going towards the floor. We're going to come out of this mindfully. We're going to inhale halfway up. Exhale that whole breath there. Inhaling all the way back up to standing. I'm going to heel toe in just a little bit. This time we're going to do expanded leg stretch B. For expanded leg stretch B, you're going to interlace both hands behind your back. You're going to slide those thumb knuckles down your tailbone, opening your chest, and again, folding at the hips. And if it's in your practice, if it feels good in your body, your hands can come away from your back, reaching towards the ceiling. Very mindfully, we're going to let go of those hands, bring our hands to our hips, we're going to inhale halfway up, and exhale that breath, and inhale all the way back up to stand. Okay. We're going to heel toe in, all the way back to the middle, coming back to mountain pose, and just stacking all of our bones, drumming up on the instep of your foot, activating your quadriceps just a little bit to bring those kneecaps up your body just a little. Shoulders, shoulders, dropping your shoulders down away from your ears. Just gathering yourself. Okay. From here, we're going to step back out to a wide legged posture. This time, we're going for Warrior One. So, Warrior One is actually a train track pose. So, instead of your legs being in or your feet being in a tightrope formation, they're actually going to be on parallel train tracks. So as I set up for the pose, my right foot's going to step towards the front of my mat. My left foot, again, is going to be offset from my right foot. And my left foot is actually pointing off at about a 45 degree angle. So go ahead and take a look back at those toes. Make sure you're not parallel to the back edge of your mat or perpendicular to a long edge. You want that foot at about 45 degree angle. Just like with warrior two, we're going to bend that front knee. That front knee, you want to be approximately stacked onto your ankle. Arms are going to come up. Make sure you drop your shoulders down away from your ears, rooting down firmly through the pinky toe side of that left. drop that left knee all the way down to the mat. We're going to take a low lunge here. So from here, you're just going to take your hips, dropping your hips further towards that mat. Big, big stretch here on that left side hip flexor. The farther you go towards the floor, the more intense that stretch gets. So coming back with your hips, finding 
something that purchased with that back toe coming back to warrior one. And this time for the transition, we're going to heel toe in just a little bit. We're just going to step all the way to the front of the mat. Good. From the front of the mat, we're going to transition directly into warrior one on the second side. So this time it's the right foot that steps back. And again, you want parallel train tracks. So this time it's the right foot that should be pointed off at about a 45 degree angle, protecting that knee, sinking down deep into that left leg, arms coming up, dropping those shoulders down and away from your ears. Actively reaching back through the pinky toe side of your right foot. So from here, we're going to drop that knee, right knee down to the mat. And again, we're just scooting the hips all the way towards the floor. And again, the, the lower your hips go, the bigger the stretch in that right hip flexor this time. Okay. Now we'll start transitioning. So coming back up into Warrior One, heel toe in just a little bit. And a big step towards the front of the mat. Dropping your arms down to the side. Coming back to the long side of the mat. So from here, we are going to come back out, um, similar to where we were in goddess pose at the beginning of the practice. And we are going to take a very deep squat, also known as malasana. So just literally, squatting down as deep as you can without toppling over. If your heels come up off the floor, I'm okay with that. If you want to use your elbows to press your knees open just a little bit, you can. that a lot of people have trouble with based on flexibility in their lower legs, whether it's through the ankle or the knees. So this next transition, um, we'll do it as gracefully as possible. It's not a pretty one. We're going to transition from malasana to boat pose. So if you want to take your hands free, put your hands down behind you, you're literally just going to sit back on your backside Feet are going to come out in front, and you're going to transition straight into boat pose. There are several variations here for boat pose. Some people's boat pose might look just like this. This is another variation of boat pose. If you've been practicing for quite some time and you want the full variation, take Baddha Konasana, also known as seated bound angle pose. So my feet are going to come together right in front of me. It's almost like my, the soles of my feet have become an open book. Um, I'm pressing the soles of my feet together, pulling them into my midsection. There are a lot of variations of this pose. A lot of people's bodies will only go this far going to explore this pose a little bit. You're going to sit up nice and tall. And you can fold forward at the hips, keeping that neutral spine. So your spine should stay straight. And you're just going to lean forward over those feet. If you have long arms, you can use your elbows to press down onto your knees, opening those legs up just a little bit further, increasing that stretch through the groin. back up to neutral. I'm going to send our feet out straight. 
This pose here is called staff or stick pose. This is basically a seated version of mountain pose. So reaching my feet out long, my feet are active, I'm sitting up tall on my sit bones, my hands are going to go on the mat next to me. Um, proportionally, some people's arms might not reach all the way down. Just sitting up with a nice strong spine, opening my chest, and dropping my shoulders away from my ears. back to a cross-legged posture. So if, if you maybe you started your practice today with your legs crossed when we were centering, you can bring your feet back in. We call this easy pose. And what we're going to do is just take a few deep breaths here. We're going to use our arms and we're going to add a twist. So I'm going to inhale my arms overhead and exhale my arms down. Just another variation of a sun breath. Inhaling arms up overhead, exhaling down. It's a good opportunity to come back to the sound of your breath. Exhaling down. Inhaling up. And this time when I exhale, I'm going to bring my left hand to my right knee, my right arm behind, sitting up nice and tall, using that left arm to pull myself a little deeper into a twist. Sitting up nice and tall. Good. On the inhale, we're going to inhale arms back up overhead. Exhaling right hand, left knee this time. Again, using that breath to lengthen your spine. Sit up nice and tall. And maybe on the exhale, twisting just a little bit deeper. On the inhale, we're going to bring our arms back up overhead. Exhale, hands down. I'm going to transition all the way down to our backs now. So just bringing the feet around. Legs are going to stay bent. You're going to go all the way down onto your back. Just one more twist here before we finish up our practice today. Arms are going to go out in a T. Left leg is going to go down. Right leg is going to go down. Now, in a lot of people, this is going to be enough of a twist. However, if you want to go a little bit deeper, bring your, your knees back up, feet flat on the floor. You're going to pick your feet up or pick your backside up off the mat. You're going to take your hips over to the right side of your mat, put your hips back down, and now bring your knees over to the left. Make this a little deeper of a twist with your left hand pulling on that right knee. Or if you want to go even deeper, you can take that left ankle and place it on top of the right knee. Lots of variations there for you to choose from. Just exploring that pose, finding the twist that feels best in your body. So I'm going to bring my knees back up towards the ceiling. Put my hips back in the center of the mat. I'm going to press down, lifting my hips off the floor. This time they're going to the left. And I'm going to bring my knees over to the right side. And again, you've got several options, whether it's your hand, no support, or you can use, this time it will be the right ankle on top of the left knee. going back towards the ceiling, hips are going back towards the center of the mat. If there's any certain poses that you like to finish out your yoga practice, I always like happy baby, so my feet are going to come up towards the ceiling, bending my knees, reaching up, elbows inside my knees, grabbing for the soles of both feet. 
rocking gently there, making it a happy baby. And when you feel like you've had enough happy baby, you'll let go of those feet. You're going to extend your feet out in front of you. You're going to make yourself as comfortable as possible. Settling in for Shavasana. Remember, every yoga practice should always end with Shavasana. It's a chance for you to integrate everything that you've done with your body over the last 15 minutes or so. Um, I'd like for you to take at least five minutes, close your eyes, let go of your breath, and rest. <laughs> 